Today's video is going to be a faster than normal video. I mean, the length is the same. On my end, it was super fast. I had to do a, a bunch of things real quick. Uh, I'm moving, you know, i I'm, I'm got a sinus infection, so I apologize for the sound quality. But I wanted to make sure that you guys got a video. And so today, I am working on, like, some banners for the cast of Critical Role, which I don't think it's a big surprise to anyone in D&D &D right now that Critical Role wields so much too. And I'm not, I don't consider myself an artist. And so what I wanna do is make these banners for, for each cast member and a couple of the uh, reoccurring uh, PCs on the show as a way to say thank you for everything that they've done. Um, I owe a lot to Geek and Sundry, and also to Critical Role. If it wasn't for Critical Role, I wouldn't have begun to watch all the other shows on, on Geek and Sundry. And so if you're interested in D&D and you're interested in tabletop gaming, I recommend checking out Critical Role at the very least. Aside from that, um, what you see me doing is setting all my layers. I am adjusting the color of... Of this bottom layer trying to make sure that I get it the way I need it. Uh, I'm right now working on Liam's banner and I'm trying to go with kind of like this greenish blue and here in a minute what I'll do is I will turn down the uh, opacity of that layer so that way it'll be better. And what you see me doing is taking the parchment readjusting it so that way it fits uh, the, the my work area better and another thing I'd like to add is that this is just one way to make maps as always there's more than one way to skin a dragon this is just how I make my maps uh, I have friends that do them by hand and then laminate them I have friends that can draw a map on a napkin and that's what they'll use. And it's not like the most detailed, but it makes sense and it works. Um, if, if you wanna make a map using Photoshop and you like my tutorials, that's great. If you wanna use another program, that's awesome. The whole point of this tutorial is not for me to show you how to make maps, but to show you that making maps, whichever way you choose, is good. And that there is no one way to do it. And I personally believe having a map for your setting makes your setting better. That's just my opinion though. I'm not an expert in any way. So feel free to do it your way. And that's the correct way. As long as your players are having a good time and as long as you're having a good time, then it's the right way. And so as you can see, I've lowered the, the opacity so I get that kind of teal, whatever color blue you want to call that. And, and so now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm changing the shape of the lake. I'm picking more brushes, obviously, because that's what this channel is all about, picking brushes. And as, as I'm filling it out, I'm kind of like, ooh, that looks cool. And so that's kind of how I do it. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason. It's just whatever feels right. And once again, I apologize for not continuing the tutorial that I had, been, I had started last the last two weeks but I wanted to make sure that I had something for you guys and also at the end of this video there will be links in the doobly-doo and you will be able to click on those links and you'll have two brand new maps to use in your own game you can use them however you want any way you want just make sure you let people know that you found these cool maps because of this cool YouTube channel or you can even say lame if you want to be honest but just that you found them through my channel and I would appreciate that Otherwise, feel free to use them any way you want. And as you, as you see, you get these really cool nifty effects and this is um, kind of like a paint spill brush. I like the texture and I'm adding some rivers to where there are some lines in the, the brush. The brush creates these perfectly straight lines that do not look natural and so I feel the need to go in and clean them up. So like, there's another one 
And so instead of using like to make a river, I'm just, I added more lake and now I'm gonna clean up all these little holes with these little ponds or small, smaller lakes. I don't know, I don't know, they look cool. Um, kind of reminds me of Skyrim, some of the, where the uh, ge geysers are. They have these little circular lakes that are just there. And in the background, of course, is Shield of Tomorrow, which is another great tabletop RPG show on Alpha, which wouldn't have happened without both Nerdist and Geek and Sundry. So, um, check it out. It's about Star Trek, if you can't guess. And if you can't guess, that's totally okay. But it is about Star Trek, and it's super good. And if you also like Doctor Who, they did a, ser a show on that as well. Um, same GM, um, a couple of the same players. So I recommend it. Eric is a great GM, and you can learn a lot just from watching him GM his, uh, his games. So yeah, all these little bitty lakes, just to kind of clean it up and make sure that they're not too... Uh, uniform. I like I like my coastlines to kind of not be as blocky, but at the same time, not too smooth either. Um, and you get a good look at the texture of the paper. And if you want to print this out, you can go to Staples or any office supply store, and they have that, and either buy the paper or have them print it for you. But they have this textured paper that looks they call it linen. I think is what's called, and it. It, you can see all the lines and stuff in the paper, and it looks super cool. And uh, it, it, it also creates a um, tactical memory. A, a, I don't know if that's the right word. A touch memory um, for your players. When they touch your map, they'll remember the texture, and it makes it more, more real. And yes, I am making sure that I pick the right name, Vax, because names are a big deal, and I don't want to make the wrong name. So yes, I'm making one for Vax, for Liam. Even the DM gets them wrong sometimes. So I would recommend my play, any, any DM, tell your players any name's good, but try to make each and every name different sounding so that way they're easier to remember. Uh, there are two twin half-elves, and their names are Vax and Vex. So, hilarity ensues. But I like that, that, the, that he let them go with it, knowing that it would be frustrating. Once again, I'm using... Uh, one of the many fonts that you can find on the internet. I wish I remembered the name of this one when I was recording the video, but I don't, and so I'm sorry. I'm probably gonna cut all this out, and if I don't, I'm sorry. Last episode, I wrote down what I wanted to say so I could avoid ums and ums and lots of ahs, but um, there's one. I don't have as much time, so this is again another commercial for my friend's blog. She is one of my players and she has now started DMing and I think in the long term she's going to far surpass my DMing skills. And I just want to support her and her blog. So if you get a chance to go buy it, please check it out. I promise you. It, it, if you like D&D and tabletop RPGs, you'll love it. And that's my grandma's dog, Sugar, in the background, if you can hear that. She's super cool. I'm finishing some mountains. And I'm adding some uh, uh, little map details so that... Some trees and stuff. Once again... I just go by feel. I go, okay, here's a mountain, then here's some pine trees. Um, if I mix it up, I might use some of the other tree brushes. But really, once again, when you're making your own map, you do what you think is right.
There really isn't a rhyme or a reason. Now, some people say that it has to be like scientifically accurate. Like here's the mountains, here's the rivers, and there's the, the dry side of the mountain and the wet side of the mountain. And like, this is how mountains form. And I think that's great. I, if you are passionate about cartography and realistic cartography, then by all means, do it this way. Uh, do it that way, I should say. Um, in any case, just remember that when making a map or running a game, what's more important is that it makes sense to you. If, if you think it looks good, then it looks good. And if your players make fun of it, then maybe you should tell them how much time you put into it and ask that if they don't like it, to just, you know, maybe say the map's hard to read or give you some constructive criticism instead of just making fun of it. Once again, I want to thank all of you for watching my videos. I want to thank you for uh, commenting. I want to thank you for submitting your own maps and all of the wonderful likes and subscribers. I want to thank you specifically. If I was better prepared and better at my job, I would be thanking you by listing your names. However, um, I will do that in the next video, I promise. And as always, I'm Matt, Geek Outs Happen, and every great campaign starts with a map. And as long as you make it your map, then that's all that matters. So take care, be nice to each other, and I'll see you guys next time.